begin my presentation by sharing with you my journey on how I became a data journalist. My journey into, into journalism started around uh, the time of FISMA's fall protests. I was part of a small team of students who investigated and explored different models for free higher education. After my student years, I ended up working with data journalists that opened up a civic tech company based in Cape Town. I got to work on award-winning projects investigating the National Lotteries Commission and the impact the drought had on local residents here in the Western Cape. Here, I learned how to incorporate my experience in working with data and statistics to drive new stories. I got to learn and practice skills like web scraping, organizing, analyzing, and visualizing data. In the end, I helped take big bits of information and turn them into easy to understand visualizations, giving us a picture of what was really going on. In 2022, I started working as a data wrangler with Ox Packers, and I was part of a team who built the Wild Eye Southern Africa from ground up. Months later, I'm still collecting the data for, for the map, and you know, it's been a very long but a rewarding journey. Now we're going to talk about data journalism. So what is it? Data journalism is a journalistic process based on analyzing, filtering uh, large data sets for the purpose of creating or elevating story. Sometimes this can be breaking news, but that isn't always the case. A data journalist is someone who collects um, the data on a variety of topics from a variety of sources to use in their reports. They ensure that data sources are reliable and they ensure that data integrity is maintained. And this is a very important um, thing in journalism because these stories will be viewed by many, many people. Data journalism is an, is an opportunity to tell a story in as best way possible and it combines data with traditional reporting skills of writing and of telling a story. Um, the journey into data journalism. Typically, this will begin when a journalist has a story idea, then they need to actually find the data that gives context to their story. So they move on to data collection. Here they find various sources to collect and to collate data, then they let the data give life to the story idea. Always make sure that the data guides your story and not the other way around as you want to present as full a picture as possible. Once you have the data, you'll probably need to clean it. Use tools, um, various data tools to clean the data. That is to say you remove duplicates, you fix badly formatted data, or you remove any incorrect details that are in your data set. And with the cleaned and formatted data set, the next step is to analyze the information that you have, um, that you have obviously, um, um, have collected and cleaned so far. So from the, from the clean data set, I uh, use tools for analysis to get a better analysis and to understand what your data tells you. And finally, you want to create a visual representation of your data. Then you use visualization tools to present data in an easy to understand format. And now that you have, um, now that you are able to tell a data-driven story, you can, you can call yourself a data genomist. Having gone through the typical steps you'll take when practicing data journalism, let's talk a bit about the purpose of data training. By training journalists how to incorporate data in their work, we can teach them to find, analyze, interpret, and visualize data in compelling new ways. The training develops the necessary data skills to be able to make sense of vast data uh, sets easily and, and quickly. And we're training um, data journalists to, have, to effectively find and use evidence from an existing investigative hypothesis. We're also training them to leverage data analysis to open up areas that would otherwise be impossible to investigate. Um, these have become essential skills. I've included a link in the presentation on how you can break into data journalism. This website is an excellent resource with lots of information um, on what data journalism is all about. Now let's take a, a, a look at data journalism in practice. Here is a list of some good examples of data journalism projects and some details about what makes them so. At the very top of the list, we have our very own The Wild Eye by us, Oxpackers. 
the distribution of the data points across the global map with interactive tooltips that gives context and understanding um, different types of wildlife crimes committed by who, when, and how, and what their sentencing was or is, is what makes this project an excellent example of a great um, data journalism project. Next on our list is Explore FinCEN um, file data by ICIJ, which is an international consortium of investigative journalists. What makes this project a good example of data journalism is how well it depicts the data relating to the flow of transactions from one country to the other. And third on our list is um, Sorry about that. Third on our list is Visualizing 20 Years of War in Afghanistan by Al Jazeera. The way in which statistics and infographics were incorporated to tell this story and adding some emotion to it is what makes it a good example of um, a data journalism project. Moving on, fourth on our list is um, a COVID-19 vaccination tracker by Realtors. The interactivity, and the way in which the data is visualized comparatively makes this a good example of data journalism project. And finally, on our list is visualized uh, the glaciers then and now by the, the Guardian. What makes this project a good example of data journalism is how well the use of animation was applied to depict the changes in data that shows glaciers melting um, over time. You can find even more great examples of the best data journalism projects of 2021 from datajournalism.com. There are a lot of different tools out there that you can use when it comes to collecting, cleaning, analyzing, and visualizing data. I'm going to talk about some of the tools I've used frequently in my work and hopefully provide you with a bit of how to when it comes to working with data. We'll start with data collection. As you know, this is a starting point where you'll be finding out what information is actually available to you. There are a lot of different data um, sources and ways of doing this, but here's a few examples. First one is Google News Scraper. I have personal experience of using this tool. It is a lightweight package that scrapes articles data from Google News. It is not challenging to use, but it does require a basic understanding of JavaScript and coding ability of JS, as you need to install some node package managers to allow it to execute. Other tools include um, researching more effectively using search operators. Investigative dashboard, import.io, Ushahidi, um, and the use of public registries and other administrative uh, online data sources. Cleaning, this is the next step in your data journey. Often the data collected will be what we call dirty and you'll need to clean it in such a way that you can actually work with the raw information. There are two tools that I'd recommend using. The first one is um, CSV Fingerprint and another one is OpenRefine. OpenRefine is an open source desktop application for data, for data cleaning. My experience with using it dates back to 2019 and I used it for checking inconsistencies, removing duplicates um, and unwanted data. It is very intuitive to use, and overall, I had a great experience using it. Analysis. Once your data is cleaned and you can actually make head and tail of what it's telling you, you'll get to actually analyze it. This is more than just looking at spreadsheet and summing what the information says. Here, you'll need to look for patterns, trends, outliers, and identify anything that stands out. The following are three excellent tools I would suggest using for analysis. First one is Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. And then another one is Tableau Public. I have used both of these tools and they are also very intuitive. They're easy to understand and they're just amazing at handling large data sets. Next, 
visualization. Um, a good data journalism story doesn't always need a visualization and you shouldn't create one just for the sake of it, but you can amplify your story and present the information in a way that works nicely alongside text, audio or visuals. There are um, a lot of tools out there that I'd recommend using when it comes to um, visualizing your data. Um, you also need to consider what the publication you are working for can support technically, technically speaking. And on the screen, you have Data Wrapper. This is one of the best tools I've used for visualizations. Um, I've been using this tool for over a year now, and it just keeps getting better and better and more easy um, and exciting to use, not to mention how quick their support team is in responding to questions when you need them to help you. Um, other tools include Infogram, Pixel, um, Pixel Map, Coggle, Charted, Kato, Google Data Gift Maker. Your Google Data Gift Maker is a tool about making gifts in minutes. It's very fun to use. Um, I've shared a link in the presentation where you can find other tools for collecting, cleaning, and analysis and visualization. 